Welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanjo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Love is in the air, quite literally. Ah, awesomeness. And also joining me today is Jacob. Hello, students, and welcome to the 8th grade history class on 19th century. Today, we're going to talk about imperialism and how absolutely nothing bad ever came out of it. Ah, I guess. Hmm. I, I am out of it for history, but still, but still. Uh, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic issue number 100. I'll repeat that again. Issue number 100. Wow. Oh, man. I am just blown away by this. Ah, oh, Silver, do you remember us doing this about, what, nine years ago or so? Yep, it's been a long journey. Oh, man. Uh, what, what? It's been a long road getting from there to here. What do I even see, man? Like, it's... Is it nine years? Is it? Well, it came out <laughs> in think... 2012. Really now? But... So it's about eight plus years no they say nine so yeah nine years then yeah it's well we number. didn't we didn't start reviewing everything all at the same time yeah. uh i think i i think it's been like six to seven years our our time oh, probably but still man wow hold on let me check uh um, that was I... the first issue all right. Uh, well, you you do that. Uh, me and Silver are just going to reminisce and stuff. Like, did you have you imagined this is going to reach one hundred issues? No, but I'm pleased it did. Oh man, I I am just happy with this. I am just happy with this. Okay, I got it. Uh, it All was right. recorded on June thirteenth, two thousand fourteen. So, so two basic. years after. Ah, uh, right. Man, I, I'm just pleased as uh, I'm just peachy word stuff to say that I'm happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, I, I am with you guys. <laughs> it's all good, man. You, uh, people come and go, and what matters is is that we've done it and it's there for prosperity and 100 episodes. And to be honest with you guys, Tyra was supposed to join us. And we could have done this whole 100 bit and stuff like, yeah, this is going to be awesome and whatnot, but you but got alas. us instead. <laughs> you... Trishara couldn't join us? Yeah. Uh, he he said that he had other plans with cooler kids. We aren't cool enough for him? Nah, man. And That's uh, okay. Sorry. I've still got my blue Pokeballs. <laughs> Yep, yep. He shan't escape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. The great balls are blue. They're great That's blue right. balls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> oh, I can't say much. Ouch. <clears throat> I mean, that's why I, uh, at Everfree, I, I had on a blue cloak and I was like, I am from the Order of Blue Balls. <laughs> Have you seen oh, Torterra 1324? Oh, that's what that thing was. <laughs> it's not a recording on Twitter. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh. <laughs> I wish we were doing videos so people can see my face. But anywho, oh, boys, in this issue, Rainbow Dash, Captain Solano, and their friends visit the Bird Kingdom, where Solano's old friendship are tested and a new mysterious enemy lurks in the shadow. So, um, first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think? Well, a part of me is, is disappointed. This is the 100th issue, but it ties into the other countries elements of harmony uh, storyline. So, only one of our main cast makes an appearance for most of it. And I'm just, how can I, I feel like a hundredth issue should feature all of our cast and celebration. 
That is true. Yeah, like uh, it. It. Hmm. How do you put this? Um, it should s- resemble how episode one hundred was. Yeah, I mean, well, episode one hundred was uh, was slice of life and focused on the background ponies. Two hundred was Sparkle Seven. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. But I mean, this is is part of the overall approach. I'm certainly not uh, dismissing that, you know, the continuing storyline. But I kind of wish we could have gotten everybody in on this, not just Rainbow Dash and a little bit by Twilight. Yeah, that, that is true. That is true. But anywho, um, Jacob, what about you? Well, this is this is the issue that explains all that's happened since the start of season ten. And gives an explanation what the fuck is the deal with all these trees of harmony that exist now to devalue the uniqueness of Equestria in the fantasy world. Sadly for the story, there's too much, too many things going on against it. But one notable that especially going on against it, and as Silver mentioned, this is the 100th issue of the Friendship is Magic comics. And as I said earlier, this comic came out in 2012. Uh, as a part of the continuation of Canterlot Wedding, so this is basically a huge milestone. This issue is supposed to be special, almost on the annual level special story, accompanied by a lot of fanfare. That's what would be the part, but unfortunately, because Hasbro's corporate decision to axe G5 and G4 series as fast as possible to try and focus on the new G5 uh, cash cow while trying to <clears throat> mask. It as if it's some sort of fault of global pandemic has robbed us of the sad fanfare, and now we're forced to read this watered down and rushed story that was nothing but disappointing on the world building stage. So I don't think things would have improved even if Jeremy Whitley wouldn't wasn't forced to cut things down. But while we're in the subject of disappointment, let's talk about the cover for the issue 100. Here we have a beautiful landmark of main six drawn by Andy Price to show how far we've come in the long nine year run. And then Spike is just standing there face palming because of a crack he made in the memorial just before he finished it. It's almost as <laughs> it's almost as if uh, he's going we've such a, we've had such a successful run and then this shit happens just before the end. It's almost as if the artist is trying to take a shot at how bad the story is on the the last story of the series is. Hmm. All right. Um. In honesty, um, most pony content ends with a whimper or with a poof, and this is no different, I guess. No, not not always. Last time it did, it ended in an explosion. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> um. Uh, is that all? Yeah. All right. And as for me, I hmm, how do I put how 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 do I put this? This was a very interesting comic. I like how the story went, but it felt lacking. It felt rather meh, and by that I mean it's it's part of the. How do I put this? It, it, it's part of the 100 issue kind of thing, like celebration, bing bang, whatever, bam. And it's supposed to represent that the comic was has gone this long and we're awesome. But what we got was this continuation to the storyline where, hey guys, look, it's Rainbow Dash and her story arc with the whole thing uh, isn't that awesome and whatnot like yeah I uh, I don't know I like the story but I got no idea I mean <clears throat> putting the 100 issue aside this is just part of the storyline but when you take a look see that this is part of the 100 issue it has a lot of problems uh, but th- those are my f- initial thoughts so anyway, um, if you guys at home have not read this comic yet, pause sure and go do so. Welcome back. I uh, hope you enjoyed the comic. And that ending there, right? 
So anyway, we start off the comic with Lyra and Bonbon bon telling Rainbow Dash to come out and see the oohs and ahs of the um ta- the town of Orni Ornithia. That's how you say it. Mm-hmm. Ornithia. Ornithia. You got Ornithia. it. Ornithia. All right. And at first, I was pondering, wait, why is Lyra and Bonbon bon there? Like they're just regulars, and it clicked. They're spies. Okay, carry on. <laughs> so and possibly also to make a little parallel later down the line. And they're like, Rainbow, stop nippling that ear and come out of the closet. Oh, <laughs> why? And she's like, I'm not coming out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, st- okay, stuck in I'm it. trying to get a little mad now, so I pull out my gun. <laughs> I get that reference, and I get a song. Oh God, uh, awesome album, by the way. Um, <clears throat> but anywho, um, we we see the ponies head to uh, Ornithia. And they just walk around and see, like, oh, wow, there's awesome eagles, there's hawks. Like, oh, wow, um, that's cool. And either, I think it's Lyra, as uh, why don't they see parrots? And um, Solano just says, like, oh, yeah, um, the parrots don't live up here. They live down below a bit. And you can see that, oh, no, this is a caste system. Ah, this is not fun. But... Let's not dwell on that because we're going straight to the castle. Woohoo! And while heading to the castle, Rainbow Dash says, Oh gosh, this is going to be cool. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. And Spitfire just says to Rainbow Dash, Oh, I never peg you for a person that enjoys weddings. And Rainbow Dash says, No, no, no. I personally um, want to... I'm just here because... Um, my friend's done crazy stuff and crazy stuff happens with a tree. So I'm just here waiting for crazy stuff to happen with a tree. It's just how the comic works. I mean, it's just how this works. You don't question it. It just works. And um, they uh, go to the castle gate and um, Hawkman just tells uh, Solano that says uh, the royal family is preparing for a wedding. Uh, they are not holding an uh, audience with commoners right now. And Solano tries to say something, but Rainbow Dash just says, Yo, we're delegates from Equestria. We're here on official royal business from Princess Twilight. So either you let us in or you get out of the way. <laughs> and uh, Hawkman just says, Okay, you may enter, but don't touch anything. I'll be watching you like a hawk. So I'm gonna pause there, um, guys. What do you think, um, Silver? Well, of all the of all the avians we see, or anthropomorphic avians, we don't have the answer to where is Solano's crew. <laughs> yeah, well, the- as Silver mentioned back in the Abyssinia story, this is exactly what he was referring to, and it's for a good reason that they, that they're not here. Now, what do we know about Solano? Well, truth be told, we don't really know anything about her, but in the prequel comics, we do know that she values her crew as a family. Mm-hmm. So much so that when the Storm King offered her a job to be his second in command and reduce her crew to cargo hall, she outright refused. And as a result, she ended up getting enslaved, enslaved along with them. So, knowing how much she truly values her crew would be really inconvenient to the writer who's trying to add to the story that Solano in years in uh, er, her early years used to knock boots with royalty. Hmm. Honestly, I I'm just thinking that her crew are just taking uh their compiled vacation because well they've been working for a while now and they collected those vacation days and they're just taking it now. And what better way to spend it all in Equestria? Norman, do you know what? Oh, will they find out? Norman, do you know what knocking boots means? No. Silver, partner. Explain that cowboy jargon to Norman. 
Uh, well, it basically means. <clears throat> what? Yes. They're doing it. Yeah. They get the jiggy with it. No, 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 no. Yeah, they're getting with it. Where? <laughs> in the past, that's not, that's not gonna be spoken of much. Wait, what? Past, I'm yeah. so confused. What happened? I confused. We're we're here to tell you they're shipping abound. <laughs> Yay! What? Shipping, 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 shipping. Uh, we need Terra for this. <laughs> Why are we terrible? No, I mean we need Terra. To Terra, our, oh, our well, Pokemon, because he's the shipper. <laughs> Get it? Uh, because he's well, you for. I assume we'll partake of the shipping. Yeah, but you don't work for a shipping company. <laughs> oh well, f- fair point. <laughs> but you no, know, um, so. Um, backstory, her crew is getting jiggy with it? No, you misunderstood. I said Solano in her early years used to knock boots with royalty. Oh, um, honestly, I thought she was working at the castle. Well, she was. Until that other thing happened. What? Later really? Down, Where? Later down the line, you'll see. Oh, boy, so anyway, oh, Silver, um, eh? Any, uh-huh. Anything to add? Like, um, I'm. Mm. Well, I mean, you, you, I mean, we've already covered the with the side of, <laughs> and I know Norman that's driving you. <laughs> but personally, I think it's the bomb. In honesty, I know why you're pressing buttons, but this is just fascinating for me. Well, truth be told, Solano never fascinated me much as a character. So, it while it's good to get to know what her history, I almost feel like she's a blank slate to inscribe a story upon. Yeah, that's true. Which can be a double-edged sword, because uh, in the movie, uh, she was voiced by Jada Pinkett Smith, was it? No, 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 she was a Gamora. Okay, well, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gamora voices her. Yes. I forgot her name. But anywho, yes. Uh, and in the movie, she she was just your regular upbeat character. I have a crew. I have a ship. Let's do this kind of person. But other than that, there's nothing much to say about her beyond that. Well, mm-hmm. except in the prequel comic. Well, technically, she has a ship, she has a crew, and she's a pirate. That's about it. I mean, there's no changes from the prequel to the movie. No, but it is a bit of a change in this matter, considering her crew completely disappears. And like I mentioned before, they're taking vacations, because Solano understands that, hey, uh, the crew has been working hard, and they need to relax and celebrate. But do they do they celebrate with a round of singing? Yar har fiddly dee. Being a pirate is all right with me. I what guess, you want yeah. Is free. <laughs> uh, I mean, you are a pirate. Yeah, I, no, they're not pirates anymore. They're they're cargo haulers. They're they're uh, privateers. <laughs> you are a privateer. <laughs> That's so well. But yes. Um, anything else to add? Well, we uh, here we have. Uh, Hold on. Or Nisia? Or in other words, Griffin Stump, it wasn't about the shit hole. Yeah. Wait, we did a get. Oh, man. Why no Griffin? Ah, why no Griffins? Crack! Because they're, what? Mythic, what? Cause they're what? fantasy birds, not the actual birds. Because we already had that with Gallus. We already have uh, Griffins. I, I, oh man, I'm pissed off right now. The more I think about it, the ah. Which I I do not understand this rage. What? Why are you raging for Griffins of all beings? No, because oh god, like we we had diamond dogs, we had uh, cats. I I guess it's the logical thing to have parrots right now, but Griffins, Gilda, more of her, please. 
boy. I don't know what it would be like to see Gilda become an element of harmony. I mean, she's still she's still a bit jaded. Yeah, I guess, but it would be fascinating to see what's happened to the place now. I mean, I, I guess how Jacob is to Zakura and the zebras, I'm probably that with Gilda and the uh, Griffins. Eh, well, anywho, um, anything else to add? Nah. Not at the moment. All uh, right. Um, so, Jacob, uh, anything more? Uh, you want to say anything about it? Uh, no, that's it. All right, cool. So, anyway, um, carrying back on track before I blow my fuse for no good particular reason. Um, the punch. Rainbow Dash uh, walks in, and Rainbow Dash asks Solano, um, you know anything about a tree uh, that's kind of crystally and whatever it is? I mean, like, uh, you know anything about that? And Solano just says, well, why don't you look up? And as she does that, they see the throne room, and um, it's kind of fancy. Wow. And we see that uh, there's a hawk who calls uh, Solano by Sally. Uh, they meet up and uh, tells her that uh, it's good to see her again and stuff. And um, the, the, they're just catching up. And they're, uh, uh, it's been a while since they meet up and whatnot. Uh, is the part where you guys talk about what happened this now around this area or later on because I am very confused well let's see here I, we're still going to wait because there's some information about Solano we don't yet know mm-hmm. but the royal family seems to recognize her mm-hmm. uh, although we, we only just now meet the wife of uh, Prince Elio Zephira. That's a wife. Uh-huh. Hello, now let's see here. Hello. What? Greek mythology, Hello, which means storm or storm swift in ancient Greek, was one of the harpy sisters. Yes, all a lot of these characters are named for the harpies. Mm-hmm. Which are, well, women uh bird combos but here we're being a little bit more flexible i mean there's also the harpy brothers so yeah and also they're the duster which is powerful so be careful of that oh uh, i don't know if that's even tur- tournament legal anymore <laughs> i got no idea anymore my friend <laughs> i just meanwhile <laughs> meanwhile uh the king is named for the greek god of the sea it appears Really now, Thomas was a Greek sea god who personified the wonders of the sea. And the queen? Let's see here. Ozamim, Ozamene. Ozamim, M E E M E M E M E. Oh boy. Okay, give me a second. Uh, let me, let me Electra, see. female figure in Greek mythology, a daughter of Oceanus and Tethys, and perhaps also a goddess of sun colored clouds. So there's a great deal of mythology going on around here. <clears throat> All right, um, that's fascinating with their names, but besides uh, Elio, everybody else doesn't seem right. It doesn't match the team. I'm not sure I understand. Because you said King Ta- Thomas. Thomas, was it? Uh, King Thaumas. Thaumas, yes. Thomas and Queen Ozomimi are kind of ocean based names. So they're eagles instead of fishes and so on. True, I'm not sure why they went with the sea theme, although, uh, well, I'm not, I don't know much about these figures. That was Greek mythology. I mean, they did say Wonders of the Sea. 
Also, his name is derived from the term miracle. Miracle. Um, I, um, I don't know. It, it could be a cool thing to do. I mean, if you really think about it, eagles do fly around oceans to hunt fish. So, probably, I, I guess. Eh. But anywho, <clears throat> let me get back on track and try to fast forward things. Ay, ay, ay. Um... Uh, Prince Elio greets, uh, meets up with Solano. They greet each other. He introduces her wife, uh, Zephyra. And uh, Elio just says, Yo, um, wifey, uh, Solano here. She's a pirate now. Ain't she cool? Woo! And uh, Elio just says, um, Did you come here for... Oh, oh boy. Oh, Oh, Osepit's Osepit's wedding. Am I saying that right? Osepit. 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 Mm. Um, just now I'm now I'm, oh god now I'm thinking about Pete from that Disney uh, villain thing. God damn it! But anyway, <clears throat> and he asks, "Are you coming here for Osepit's wedding and uh, stuff?" And Celis, uh, no, um. Solano just says, no, nah, not really. Um, I'm here because I'm here to introduce the royal family to the royal envoy from Equestria. And she does that and introduce uh, the crew, which is Rainbow Dash, Lyra, Bonbon, bon, and uh, Spitfire to the king and so on. And the king is happy to see them and states that, uh, I'm glad you're here, but for now, uh, I'm, we're preparing for a wedding, and and it's, it's tomorrow in the morning. So until then, um, uh, we'll have to wait on official diplomatic business. But you are invited to the wedding if you want. Like, um, come have a seat and do stuff. Uh, would you like fish on your order? And before the king can say more stuff, we see Osapit here coming and. Like being really happy to see um, Solano and yay, awesomeness. And she asks, um, What happened to your leg? Does it hurt? And Solano just says, ah, It's the work hazard thing. Uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't hurt anymore. And they hug and they talk and they introduce to. Sorry. And Osipit here introduced. Uh, Solano to her future husband, Prince Hugging, the Western Raven. And we see this snooty upstart raven person. Yeah. And <clears throat> he says, what brings you here to the castle and whatnot? And Solano just says, I uh, wanted to show my friend to the king to stuff and so on. And um, the raven person seems very sus and surprised to see those ponies there and says that, okay, um, I need to head off for now. Take care. So the spies are kind of sus. They, they see they see him entering the vents or exiting the vent. Hmm, very sus. So, <clears throat> uh, let's see. So, uh, give me a second. I'm I'm trying to figure things out, but did we skip a whole conversation about uh, also Pete saying that she'll be the guide for them in the castle? We talked a little bit about her, but mostly the knocking boots part. Uh, um, okay, because I'm just saying that um. We we see the prince, and then we see him kind of get scared of the ponies and run away. And then uh, also Pete just says, well, no creature will let me do anything to help with my own wedding, so perhaps I can be your guy. Okay, so there you go. So she just volunteers herself to uh, guide the ponies around and so on. Uh, and do you all have any questions? So yeah, uh, with that conversation there, um, everybody 
wants to ask, uh, yeah, can you tell us about that tree over there where they came from and so on? Like, so everybody is really interested about, uh, sorry, is really interested about that tree. So, uh, also Pete just says, okay, I'm, I'll just show you then. And I'm going to pause here because, wait, what? Explain to me, what happened? I don't know what. Okay, boots, where? 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 Wait for... Not yet, wait. Not yet. Okay, alrighty then. So, uh, anybody... Uh, sorry, Jacob, you want to um, say anything? Or like, want me to carry on before parts stuff? No, carry on. Alrighty then. Silva, you good? I'm good for the moment. Although, well, I will say one thing. Uh, Ossipede's uh, design. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they chose to go with grey colours, but it really doesn't seem to blend well with... Pastel ponies and even Solano's color scheme. I'm not. I feel like there could have been a much better choice to make her appear more lively. Mm, yeah, in all, in all honesty, I think uh, her colors complement really well with her dress. But uh, just asking, what type of bird is she? Can you tell? I like actually. I like to know that as well because the way she looks, she looks like a parrot, not an eagle. Or a hawk. Let's see here. Yeah. I'm not great at uh, marking new species. <laughs> it's all okay, but yeah, um, I'm just curious. Probably she's a type of eagle or hawk, which is mostly gray. Not raven, but yeah, uh, probably that. So I'm just guessing. But. Yes, um, having her be all grey, uh, I won't say pure dark, uh, it's on the darker spectrum, but she's lighter on the blacks and whatnot, unlike her mother, which is uh, a panda. Uh, <coughs> yes, sorry, I'm not, I'm not seeing... Character's name? Well, oh, I see the character's name. I just don't see a species assigned to it. Mm. Bird folks. Eh, I, I guess it's not that big of a deal. All right. Well, let's see here. Uh, I did say that she looks more cockatoo. Cockatoo. Cockatoo is a type of parrot, right? Yeah. Let's see here. Let me just search for gray bird. All right. See what I can turn turn up. All right. While well, you do that, I'll continue on for a bit. All right, Silva. Sounds good. All right. So, also Pete brings the ponies to the um, history museum of the trees, and uh, Solano just asks, uh, "Is it okay?" Um, she was never allowed to be in the temple before, and Solano uh, also Pete just says. Uh, you guys are here as foreign dignitary now. You can go anywhere you please. If anyone tries to stop you, I'll kill them personally. And they head to the temple. With that I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> that's how I think it works. So it's okay in my books. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. I'm just having too much fun. <laughs> so... Anywho, um, they show that the, what you call this, temple is called the Temple of Elements. Uh, sorry, the Temple of, uh, the Temple of the Temple of Love. Um, it's been here for uh, possibly more than a thousand years and so on. And with this, Rainbow Dash just um, asked, wait, uh, Temple of Elements of Love? Uh do you know anything about elements of harmony and so on? And we have a breakdown of how the elements are structured. Um, we have uh, the elements of, let me see, sorry, their elements are uh, the element of love, generosity, kindness, hope, protection, trust, and pers perseverance. Uh, the element, and she says the difficulty is our elements require three parts, uh, three pairs of birds in love that exemplify these values. So, 
Um, their thing is a bit difficult, I guess. Not really. Um, all of the other creatures have six, um, elements set to them. So, yeah, I I guess they have their own um subset of what you call this um uh subset of ah uh, i'm forgetting the word stuff yes uh, and then she just says the other temples are devoted to other relationships uh the bond of family the bond of a shared cause the bond of shared experience and the bond of countries uh most simply Love, family, history, purpose, and patriotism. Uh, the five bonds. And okay. So that's how they want to explain it. Which is kind of interesting. I guess. While all this history lesson is going on. Uh, Ly- Lyra and Bonbon are going to do spice stuff. And Spitfire just says. Uh, okay. Um, We'll keep you updated. <clears throat> And Rainbow Dash just asks Ossipede, what about friendship? Um, uh, their elements is uh, friendship. And Ossipede just says, um, like old friendship? The temple in the desert is about shared experience. The element where uh, the elements there might go to old friends. Um, what temple was it found? What temple was it you found? What temple was it you found? <laughs> okay. Uh, and Daisha says, uh, we didn't have a temple. Um, and she's just more confused with what is going on. Like, wait, what? What? what, 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 what knights? What is going on here? And Osipi just breaks down. Okay, do you all know the myth of the Knights of Harmony? The story that says that they were once the one who built this temple they taught the people of uh, of each realm how to use the elements and so on <clears throat> and this kind of breaks rainbow dash's head because this is just above her pay grade and also Pete just says oh um i have a story for that and this is my favorite story uh, and anybody wants to take over for this part because I don't, I don't think I can do justice. Silver, I think Silver's got the voice for it. <laughs> All right, Silver. Oh, S- Silver's got a voice for it. So, so, well, so Silano and Uspeed break off to talk, and Rainbow's just trying to process all no, this. No, 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 they're, they're, not that Silver. Um, we're talking about the history of the Knights of Harmony. Oh, okay. Here we go. So, long, long ago, on the island of K- Kunabola, there was a magical kingdom until I, Aku... Oops, sorry, wrong. <laughs> oh, no. <clears throat> All right. There were two royal families with three siblings each. Three princes on one side the and three princesses on the other. So this was a Brady Bunch setup. <laughs> All right. It was said that... Uh, that Kunabula was a place of eternal peace and love. They had everything they could want. But the outside world was full of chaos. And so the knights set off across the land of seas to find creatures and other lands. And wherever they sought out, they uh, they taught others what they had learned and helped them find the power of their own bonds. So they met with the zebras and they told them uh, of their... They taught them to build a temple where the tree of history could grow. Then they went to the mountains where they found the diamond dogs and their tree of family. And perhaps bone fish, bone throwing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> In the plains, they found the cats and founded the tree of purpose. Mm. Comrade looks pretty cool. Yeah. Da, ah, Definitely. And then the knights came to the clouds and aided the birds in uh, growing the tree of love and building its temple. Let's see here. The knights moved on, but they they never knew where they were going because they had lost their GPS and were too proud to ask for directions. <laughs> oh no, I, I I remember that. Like, who never asks questions? They show weakness. <laughs> 
But they always suspected there was a sixth tree of harmony, the tree of, dare I say, friendship. Mm -hmm. And they uh, never quite found it. But they left with connect. They left them with connectors to each temple. So as the temples activated, they the uh, lights lit up. And if they deactivated, well, the the lights went dark. And then one day, don't let the light go out. But they did. But then once one light going out is coincidence. Two is a trend. Three is oh my god, hide the city. <laughs> so they moved it away from its former location and into the mountains. Why did you... Where, and, a, Go ahead. and apparently they got to gentrifying pretty bad or gerrymandering because all the parrots are at a lower lower deck than the eagles. Oh, but before, so yeah, that, that's the most blatant gerrymandering I've seen in quite some time. Before that, like, why did you have to phrase it that way? It, now it reminds me of that Spongebob storyline where Patrick gave a stupid idea to why don't we just push the town from here to there? <laughs> Here, there, and everywhere. Oh boy, that's a good movie, by the way. <clears throat> I'll uh, I'll take your word for it. Oh, you do not know. Um, everything, everywhere, all at once. Let me show you a movie. Oh yeah, well, that, yes, I've seen that, but I haven't seen SpongeBob. Oh no, no, I'm just uh, you just reminded me of that movie title. But anyway. <clears throat> But anyway, who the lights have been coming back as the ponies have succeeded in their missions. Which is why they're now for the avians are now forcing a wedding. Ah, and why is that? Because uh for the for these trees to work, these trees of love, each element wielder must be a married couple. Now, I appreciate that the, they do not specify, oh, it must be marriage between a so-and-so and a da-da-da. It's open to interpretation what the wedding is, but it must be a marriage. Marriage. <laughs> marriage is what brings us together. So, give me a sec. I'm just trying to ponder here, and I see what one, two, three, four, five, five lights only, and the only one that lit up is the element of love. Uh, the, actually, yeah, the element. can I, can I talk, take over this one? Okay. Okay. We need to make a few corrections on that because I was apparently in error initially about the lights representing which trees are active because apparently the one light that is still active, that's the, the tree of the Knights of Harmony. That's the one that's always been active, not the bird ones, because uh, here it's established that the tree isn't active because you need three married couples in order to activate it. Mm, makes so, sense, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's been established. <sighs> so yeah, uh, spoiler, but not really, we'll never visit the homeland of the Knights of Harmony, nor do we ever see its tree. Yeah, okay, but so wait, there's five trees in total, so you have the... Birds, the cat, dog, zebras, and knights. And the ponies are the sixth surprise one? Yeah. Yes. Uh, they complete the set. Oh, they're, they're the random surprise one if you get in the box. All right. All right. I, I guess. So, uh, according to you, Jacob, the fifth one that's um, eternally lit is the knights version then. Yes. All right. Okay. Cool. 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 Silver, you were saying? Well, let's see here. Now I'm just looking up, trying to look up the numerical identity that is six. Uh, it's not on so, the pedestal. but that's gonna take me. That's gonna take me a minute. All right. No problem. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but now, okay. Um, I I guess I'll take it back. <clears throat> so anywho, um, we see that. After that long, brief explanation, uh, too long to read, uh, the lights are all lit up now, uh, which is strange. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, okay, I'm just going to read, but now all the lights are returning, which is why we're taking such a six steps to complete our own elements. What do you mean? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, why the wedding? Of course, my father and mother have a strong love bond. My brother and Zephyra are inseparable. It's down to me. I just need to 
uh, being in love, so I'm getting married. Uh, so this is the part where Osiris was, uh, Sadano wants to have a tat a tat with uh, Osipit. And they decided to go someplace else. Uh, Osipit just says, um, guys, don't get the painting, do whatever you like, but don't touch anything or don't steal anything. Um, once you're done, the guys will show you um, to your quarters when you're done. Alright, cool. Alright, bye. And with that, we see Rainbow Dash just trying to figure things out like, what the hey is this place? And there's some cave paintings and there's some stuff. And then like, yeah, we, we don't really know. And I think there's foreshadowing on the wall, but I got no idea. I, I am no scientist. I'm no archaeologist. And Don't so say on. that, Norman. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a c clear carving in Discord, so what? He's still at it. I, I do see Discord. Oh, uh, you, you must be imagining stuff, Silver. <laughs> Norman. <laughs> Norman. Why do you lie? <laughs> for dramatic. Why do you for, darken for, your soul with lies? For dramatic destruction. <laughs> So, <clears throat> so anywho, um, we see Hawkman's talk about uh, wanting to be guarding the wedding and whatnot. And we see Lyra and Bonbon bon being sneaky. Uh, they hear some cup hanging uh, and they seem to realize that, oh no, it's coming from where the prince is. And they spy on him. But before that, I think this is the part where I am a bit naive, and you guys know better than me? Yes? Mm, I don't know about that. I found my answer to the sixth question. All right, go ahead. All right, so the, the number six has great meaning in uh, numerology. It's both the sum of one plus two plus three, mm -hmm. and also the, uh, oh, I forget what the term is for when you multiply, but... One times two times three is also six. So uh, they say that six is pretty much uh, the perfect number. It's analogous to love, charm, health, oneness, empathy, destiny, and fate. Mm -hmm. um, makes sense. And also green. Don't forget green. Uh, I don't know about why green. The six ranger. <laughs> Oh, come on now. That ranger's been green, black, silver, gold. White. You name it. Red. Purple. Purple? Was he? Oh, no. I'm talking about I'm uh, thinking about that one guy. But yes, purple is there too. Purple's there too. Uh, I'm thinking of Q Ranger, which featured already had nine rangers to start with. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, but carry on. Let's see here. Six also represents the planet Venus. And the people who have this number in their names are said to be trustful, dependable, romantic, hedonistic, and charming in their essence. Wait, what? Like, uh, if you have Venus in your name? Uh-huh. Hmm. I don't know how many people have Venus as a name. I'm trying to think, how does that work in the modern society? I'm not sure it does, but nevertheless, six is a very important number, and that's why there are, I believe there are always six elements of harmony and six sets of trees. Mm -hmm. So 36 elements all together. Really? No. What? So what about number five? I think that's just number Bumble. five. Yeah, it's in the five lights. Um, well, see, if I remember right, number five is all about family, as it is the sum of two and three. But I think most... Oh, it also it's... relates to the senses we have. Sorry? It also, uh... It also describes our five senses. Mm -hmm. Uh, which means that it's very often associated with curiosity and the need for a variety of exciting experiences in order to feel fulfilled. I, I think uh, Jacob is just asking about, okay, the lights, there are only five lights. What happened to the six? Is it some kind of light in lighthouse or something? 
Well, I assumed it was the Knights, which has always been lit, and they're just waiting to get the uh, love tree back online. The love tree. Because on the pedestal, uh, I'm double checking it, and there's only one, two, three, four, five. And if um, spoilers what? are hit, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the knight just says that uh, the temple for the sixth one was never established, and they uh, write it off. What? If I'm not mistaken. Wait, wait, hold on. Did, did you miss the part where we, when we established that the the five lights were for uh, one was for the knights and the other ones were for all the other cities. Uh, yeah, I guess. Like I mentioned before, you have zebra, you have the cats, the dogs, uh, the birds, and the well knights. knights. So there's only five. Yeah. So yeah. what happened and to the six? The sixth one was ne- yeah, the sixth one was never established. Yeah, yeah. Was never found. Is the, is the pony one? Yeah, because they were, which was kind of yeah. strange. I, I don't <clears> think. Don't 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 go there yet. Oh, okay, <clears throat> but anywho. Silver, what about this? The tat-a-tat with uh, Ossipete. Which, which tat-a-tat? I mean, there, there are several. The one at the oh, balcony. Oh, Solano. Oh, okay. So they're at the balcony. Well, basically, Solano doesn't want her to get married. And uh, Ossipete is like, well, who are you to say that? You left. And they're basically arguing about who they used to be versus who they are now. And and uh, Kevin Solano notices that she doesn't love this this uh, raven themed suitor. Mm-hmm. So this is the flaw in the whole marriage to be an element thing. You, they're now trying to force a wedding without love, and that you'll learn to love him. Which is kind of. Uh, not agreeable, but uh, there, there are some marriages based on that. Yep, usually arranged. Mm, well, uh, it's. Uh, uh, I, 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 you know this uh, this argument between uh, Oz and uh, S- um, sorry, what is the name? Solano. Solano, yeah. It reminds me a bit on the Game of Thrones where Rob Stark had to make a strategic marriage between one of the lords to advance his campaign, war campaign. But then in- instead he decided to just marry a field nurse after the promise was already made. Which would eventually lead to the Red Wedding event and we all know what happened there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Everybody... And, uh, yeah, but then uh, his mother was telling him that he screwed up, screwed up that she was once in his shoes because she and his father were uh, arranged married and she didn't love him. But over time, uh, she simply... Uh, sorry. <clears throat> but uh, over time, simply by being forced to be together, she learned to love him. So I don't blame Ozzy for saying that... Uh, she has to accept things as they are and that she has to learn to love her husband to be for the sake of her kingdom. Uh, However, we already know by now that the crow is a ploy by the enemy to ruin things for everybody, so the whole conflict between uh, Solano and uh, Ozzy, I don't know, it just kind of pulls pointers. I mean, it's it's one of those um, for, for the story here, I mean uh, for in a nutshell, I'm not going to expand to the greater plan. Um, having Ozzy uh, marry the Raven, uh, in quotes, just to have her learn to love him is... Uh, it's, it's not a foreign concept for me because over here, they are arranged marriage and so on. So I've heard about it and I know about it and it's... It's kind of annoying for me in a sense where, oh, no problem. I learned to love this person. And it's just annoying. And besides that, Tazi has a point. What uh, right does uh, Solano have to come in and just say she knows better after she's not been around for years? 
So even with with that gesture by the end that follows, it just feels kind of hollow. Eh, true. It's one of those scenarios where you you have one of your long time friends come in and just says, "Ah, oh, you should not marry this person." And who are you to say that? Like we haven't even met in years, and you dare say that? <laughs> How dare you? Oh boy. So we're not to that part yet, right? Not yet. Sure. All right, then. Anywho, moving on. Wow, this is going to be fun. Uh, we we see the crow panicking, uh, saying that oh no, my 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 my, my feathers, my, my plumage, they're uh, they're falling off and so on. And the voice says, "Don't forget, you gave uh, who gave you that beautiful uh, plumage and so on." And the crow says. Yeah, I'm grateful um, and stuff. But now that the ponies and the parrot are here, um, I'm, I'm kind of scared. I'm backing down. And suddenly, uh, the figure just blasts the door and reveals the ponies are sneaking. And yeah, um, I, I guess this is the part where we're at. Yes, no? Yeah, this is the part where we're like, oh, crud. All right, I'm silver. Please. All right. Well, with Lyra and Bon Bon added, we cut back to Asa Pete and Celiano having their argument. Turns out that be running away and becoming pirates was Asa Pete's idea. But, well, instead, Solano left her behind and went, went the pirate route a solo mio. Hmm. And, well, they revealed that there was a lot of tension back at the castle. Apparently, uh, she told the king that she thought the two of you should explore, help the kingdoms reconnect. And the king replied that if uh, he left without, if Solano left without Ossipete, he'd give her her own ship. And added the threat that if you don't take this offer, you'll wish you had. Mm. So the father threw them out. At which point, at they uh, both storm off in a huff, or at least part ways, with much huffing. And all of a sudden, uh, someone zaps Solano in the noggin. Just as Rainbow and Spitfire are ambushed in the catacombs, also KO'd. Oh no. And this is where, suddenly, Solano wakes up back on her ship, sons of the crew, and the ship is going down. And everybody's unconscious. Oh, well, that's not good. That's not good at all. Not good at all. So Solano starts uh, putting on parachutes on the uh, unconscious Lyra and Bon Bon. No wings there. And then apparently she can fly. I didn't know this was possible. I mean, sure, they're birds, but they're anthropomorphic birds. And so she can at very least glide as the ship crashes and uh, everyone lands in the sand and Ocel and Solano is now out of a job. <laughs> yes, too true. Uh, but it, This is the second time her ship got destroyed now. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, these ponies, every time they show up, her, her ship goes down. <laughs> so true. Um, but for, for... Except for one. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, sorry. For, I'm just not... for one? Which one? Which one? Uh, the prequel movie? Well, no, it's just that, uh, that you said, except for we, the... I said that ponies show up and her ship gets blown up. True, that happened in ja the movie, yes. And Jacob was saying except for one. I don't know the one. Yeah, was it in the prequel? <laughs> the exception. The ship. The ship? Which, right, but, which one? But that eventually got bl blown up. Uh, no, it I said, uh, you said, uh, this is another, sorry, I messed it up. Basically, I said, this is the second ship that, uh, ship that got blown up. And then Silver said, whenever ponies are around, her ship all gets, gets blown up. And then I said, except for one. And which one was that? Uh, Silver, do the thing. Well, I didn't blow up her ship. <laughs> 
Silver, do the I mean, thing. I, I, what? No, not that <laughs> one. Uh, oh, you said what? Was your, uh, yeah. <laughs> that one. Oh, okay, that ship. Oh, we're talking about that ship. Well, that ship is currently uh, sinking as well because the wedding is going to take place. Okay, um, I guess the Phoenix Force is there somehow. The Phoenix Force? Man, we're getting a lot of bird terminology mixed up here. Yeah, I'm just seeing the wall oh, that Solano oh, crashed the in. Emblem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, anywho, uh, basically, Lyra and Bon Bon are outy for the rest of the story. They're just enjoying some sun in the desert. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be up to Spitfire and Rainbow Dash to fly Solano back to the kingdom, where they basically send her crashing through a window in the most dramatic, I object. Yeah, and that, that face when she entered in, just awesome. But then oh. we learned that her costume is quite functional, as it's an emergency reserve pirate hat cummerbund. <laughs> uh, oh yes, yeah, Solano has a hammer space sash. Mm -hmm. Or in it's like TARDIS pockets. Yep. Or in D and D, we call it a bag of holding. <laughs> uh, this shall be called the stash of holding. <laughs> Mm, check out that stash. Mm. Stash, actually, but still. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> so, Solano breaks into the wedding to object. And, all right, doesn't seem like a wedding in that angle. <laughs> well, it's certainly not uh, the red wedding, thank goodness. That, that. <laughs> so, oh, uh, boys, uh, it, it seems that, um, if you don't mind, Silva, uh, uh -huh. It seems that um, with her great entrance, she challenged the prince to a duel. And the caveat is they need to play cards game on motorcycles. <laughs> but On motorcycles! Yes. But the prince says, Nah, I'm going to let these two Hawkmen beat you up. <laughs> I can't believe they look like Hawkman. Come on. Does a Hawkman have a, ba a battle cry? Does anyone know? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, if I die, I'll get reincarnated. I, I guess, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> here's my alien tech, I guess. Um, So, the guards are ready to smack her, but Rainbow Dash comes in and dealt with the guards. So, it's just now uh, Solano and the prince... And the prince has a dagger and he throws it at Solano and she stumbles for a bit and touches the throne and the throne is all lit up. What? Wait, what? Ugh. Yep, because she's the element of perseverance. And because of uh, the throne... It's heavily implied, but not stated, that they both love each other. Uh, like, more than friends. Oh, uh, I mean, they're, 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 they're like Lyra and Bon Bon, they're special. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, let me... The problem is that Lyra and Bon Bon were, uh, <clears throat> like, since, I don't know which episode in the first season together. Which is why they deserve, uh, what do you call it? Hold on. Uh, just give me... Their happy ending? Oh, yeah. Oh. oh, they're honeymoon over on the beach just now. Here, however, is the problem that Solano's apparently been away like years on end, so to suddenly come back and this thing, this thing to call water, it's just meh. Um, you know, <laughs> um, this is in the realm of relationships, so I don't want to say much, but, uh, I'm just going to just read stuff here because um, uh, Ose Pete here just says, oh, Solano um, uh, points to her and Solano just says, uh, it's okay, I'm not hurt, but no, take a look-see. And shows her holding the throne and 
she's glowing and or simply just says uh, you're in those elements, I don't know. That means, uh, that must mean. Why did you tell me? And Solano was like, I, I got you, I got no idea. Um, that question goes both ways. You, you must know an answer. But before so, no, no, you, you must love me too. <gasps> Jesus Christ, Norman, don't screech. <laughs> Norman, I think you're more a bird than the characters. <laughs> Norman want a cracker? Oh wait, that's me. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'm try- let's try and finish this. So, and- oh, let's try and finish this with your with your revelation and screeching. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, I am a sucker for love by surprise, but still. Um. <clears throat> well, here's the thing that I don't get. <laughs> All you have to do is touch the throne, and it'll glow if you're the right one. <laughs> that wasn't ever so, established. Uh, mm, it kind well, of it was really like. I mean, it's being established here and now. Uh, um, in previous comics, um, with the zebras, uh, one of the characters stood on a pedestal, and it glowed. Um, if another person went on to it and it wasn't their element it didn't so it was established there and it's been repeated for a few times uh throughout the series uh this one i guess but the situation that it happened in was a bit convoluted i guess I'm just saying, if all it takes is to touch the throne and see if it'll light up to find out if you're, like, compatible or the one, then why not just get everybody in the kingdom to go through line? Okay, touch the throne. Nope. Okay, touch the throne. Nope. Okay, touch the throne. Oh, there we go. We got a glow. Silver, um, what made you think that they didn't, they, they didn't try that plan first? <laughs> because they clearly didn't ask Solano. Solano wasn't even there. Which is why they didn't ask her. <laughs> Besides, do you know how how infected the throne would look if it had everyone in the in the country touching it? I get some germ, get some uh, uh, Lysol or you know something on that germ kill. Yeah, social distancing. Yeah, I, I guess that's that's what they did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but, but that, you know, but in a way, it was also kind of predictable since. Since the start of the season 10, every single team had uh, one member that came from that specific region. Well, okay, except for the Diamond Dogs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Ooh, underwent a very different look. Yeah, true. But, but either which way, I mean, you know, no seat, it's not neat. Chair needs to be clean, but still. Um, anyway, carrying on. Uh, the crow here tries to stop Solano or kill Solano, but uh, Solano just counters and the crows give up. So he explains to the whole crew of what really happened. And <clears throat> there was this person who gave him all... Um, who, what you call this, uh, made him look good and whatnot. And if he doesn't do what they tell, they will kind of take back the gift that they give. And Rainbow Dash and uh, Spitfire just says, okay, um, who is it? Uh, We can protect you. But the voice says, you can't. And reveals to be a really strange looking creature and the strange creature just says you have sealed your fate both uh, Ore, or Ornitia and Equestria will be crushed and destroyed and this creature just uses its power to transform the crow into a big giant um, big giant creature and uh, make it grow. So with that, um, the town is, or the castle is 
destroyed and whatnot. And let's see. Um, Solano tells Rainbow Dash to head to Twilight and go warn her. Um, she doesn't want to run away, but Spitfire just says, uh, go ahead and warn the princess. I'll stay here and do backup. Uh, and she's the only fast one uh, available. So Sp Rainbow Dash spreads her wing and heads off back to Equestria. But before that, she grabs a... What do they call that? Uh, that's tablet, I guess. Yeah, that she, yep. she takes a tablet, and they and she heads off to Equestria. While that's happening, uh, we see the elements of love. Uh, there's kindness, protection, generosity. Wow, now she looks good. Uh, trust, hope, and perseverance, and they beat the heck out of whatever it was. And we got a Star Trek reference here. Yay! You're all for the war packages. And the Sonic reference. Gotta go. Twice. Gotta go faster. Wait, what was the first one? Gotta go. Yeah, gotta go faster and then the letter Sonic. Boom! And... Ah, yes, that one. Boom. Uh, and we cut back to Equestria where Twilight is learning about all the secret facts and... Yeah, all the little secret facts about Celestia and Luna uh, and stuff, which is kind of boring. And we see some... What about true origin of bat ponies? Is that boring? They don't exist. They never existed. <laughs> but anyway, um, <clears throat> we see some background ponies, which are pretty cool. We see Sunburst. We see Purple Pony at the background there. Uh, Star Swirl. Uh, is that Starlight? Yeah, that's Starlight. She's uh, she's pink and purple. Yeah, is that her? Oh yeah, it is her. Yeah, of yep. course it is. Even though she looks kind of like uh, Twilight, uh, you know, all them ponies look the same. It's dragons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we see Stygian, and there's also Jerk Pony. Yes, Jerk Pony. Jerk Pony. Star Swirl, the bearded jerk. Yeah. Jerk Pony. Yeah, but why the hell is Stygian there? He's no, he's got no place there. No, he's a popular author. He sells books. He is very popular. Yeah, but what does, um, place does he have in discovering the uh, ancient his secret history? He's just nah, there to nah, help. Nah. He's he's there for, with the original crew. Like, he, he knows a bit, and if Star Wars starts to diverge and blah 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 blah, he's there to keep him on track. Stygian was always the um, level-headed one. <coughs> was he... He was. He was. But anywho, getting back on track. Um, they were trying to research about the other trees of harmony. Uh, and Jerk Pony here just says um, he traveled through other... He, he lived a long life but never really know about the other uh, trees. Except for the one in the parallel universe that shall never be talk about because that tree never existed sorry that storyline never existed fans hated that one and they uh, denounced it denounced it really hard I love that story and they said no we can't have any good things yeah mm, I sense repression <laughs> so anyway uh, there's a crash and Rainbow Dash comes in and tells and warns Twilight about the impending doom and comic is ended. Ah, wait, what? Yep, we're setting up for the two-part super finale. Uh, wait, this is not the... Oh, God. <sighs> anyway, we have this cute comic by Kitty Cook. Yay! It's about how Sweetie Belle wants to... Um, uh, wants to try and do something amazing like her, but in the end, uh, she just says pass. Um, she'll just wait and see if she's born with natural talent. And comic ends. <laughs> We're all gonna die. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, and with that coming in, so silver, what do you think? Mind if I go? Oh, well, sorry. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Jacob. Yeah. Now, uh, I was gonna say this uh, in a bit of a story, but I decided to just wait until we get to the end. Uh, the explanation. Oh boy. Cool. The explanation why the story is as it is. Remember when the. Uh, I made uh, that cu- that joke in the Diamond Dogs arc from 2021 annual review about Twilight wanting to bring more uncultural savages into the Empire. I think so, yeah. Uh, well, that's because the writer decided to make things in th- and take things in that direction with another nation, aka the Knights of Harmony. Can we finally get an in-universe explanation as to why every arc in season 10 feels like a constant repeat of French Epis Magic season premiere? A long time ago, apparently this highly cultured and advanced people from an isolated island decided to go out into the world and, quote-unquote, uplift the uncultured creatures of the world. And as we discover, by the end, they're the ones who hid the trees and made sure that nobody would try to use them again. Because apparently the uplifted barbarians couldn't be trusted anymore. This is what's putting it off because, well, all the potential of the world building of this fantasy world has been sacrificed for an allegory of white man's burden bad. As for what white, uh, sorry, <clears throat> as for what white man's burden is, silver. Since you're better versed in English literature uh, than the rest of us. Uh, how about you explain uh, what that poem is about? Well, let's see. I'm not sure if I if I remember a poem about the quote white man's burden. Uh, let's see here. Oh wait, this was in 1899 by Rudyard Kipling. Exhorts the United States to assume colonial control of the Filipino people and their country. Basically, it was an encouragement of American annexation and colonization of the Philippine Islands. And, well, basically, tame the uh, the uncultured savages. This was the, well, the great flaw that people who emigrated from England, especially, brought over to America. We didn't see ourselves as starting over. We thought we were bringing enlightenment to a frontier. And we were wrong! <laughs> But I do want to challenge one thing uh, J- you said, Jacob. Twilight never wanted to bre- to connect with the uncultured civilizations or, or tame the barbarians. She just wanted to reach out to friends. And this legend of the uh, Knights of Harmony is propaganda. It, the, the truth may be very different than what is described in this backstory. Obviously playing up the greatness of the uh, knights. Yeah, that's why I uh, said that uh, well, this is more akin to this poem, basically. Yes. Right. So, but basically the white man's burden as a text, oh boy, they even they even quote the line on the side I'm looking at, but basically it's the justification of white is right and, well, it's part of, I think we can uh, add that to the pot of problems that got us in our current mess. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Because I don't don't know if you've noticed, but the U.S. is kind of a mess right now. Yeah. And has been for a while. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> but it's a mess everywhere. You don't have to agree that readily, thank I you. Mean, but it's a mess everywhere, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter if you're in America or in... Uh, Scandinavia or even Malaysia it, it's just a mess everywhere we all have our own personal problems <laughs> yeah so do we here in the Balkans although I will say that uh, many people have put forth their own burdens as a counter argument there's the poor man's burden by D- Dr. Howard S. Taylor addressing the negative psychosocial effects of imperialism ethos the Real White Man's Burden, 1902, by Ernest Crosby, addressing the moral, degra- moral degradation of imperialism. The Black Man's Burden. Which is still going on, I think. Yep. And so it goes. There's a lot of burdens to counter that burden, which has become a burden on everyone. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and basically this is why I I can't stomach season ten simply because the whole thing is one giant allegory. Hey. And the whole what? the whole poss- all the possibilities that could have been put in if some other writer would have handled the whole world building thing could be so much more better, but well this is what it is at this point. Hmm, all right. Well I'm not sure I, I totally agree. I I don't see it as colonization or alignment its connections friendships with peers i think that was especially true in the uh, zebra arc where i was very relieved that it wasn't all huts and uh and small tribes it was a modern city with the equally developed civilization culture well yeah because the knights helped uplift everybody well, the, there's the knights, but what the knights claim credit may not have been the truth. Yeah, that's true. Also, um, spoilers. So, so what did, so what did the knights give to everybody else? Apparently, a tree. <laughs> also, knowledge. But not knowledge, but knowledge of what we don't know. The tree, I don't know. I mean, if we take a look, see at this, um, this good example here for. The tree of love, um, I, it feels like the what you call this, um, showed them the power of the elements of love, and that's within kindness, protection, generosity, trust, uh, hope, and perseverance. I mean, those are concepts that are hard to teach, and I guess that's what they did. But in all honesty, it's just very confusing. Now, I mean, if we do go with the analogy that the knights are the imperialistic view, the fact that they're the the enemy is very telling as well. Oh yes, that's easy to uh, to figure out. Like, oh, the moment that that whatever that thing is when she turns up. Uh, what I she was basically putting what I was doing right now was me being kind to you. This is the same as Scarlet Witch counting down America showers across multiple dimensions, trying to kill her and everybody that stood in her way, and saying I was being reasonable. You know what? Fuck you, whoever wrote that stupid tribe in the movie. What movie was that again? Then we have her. What, what movie was that again? The new Doctor Strange. Oh, that one. All right. Yeah. And then we have her gleefully saying to the Rainbow Dash that the Crescent is going to become a smoking crater. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, an element of harmony right there. This is especially putting this is especially putting me off because in the next issue, it's revealed why there everybody why the knights are so upset. So it makes no fucking sense that they're spiteful to the natives of the land when they had fuck all to do with whatever. They were but with. technically, uh, it how I put this? There, uh, okay. Uh, spoilers for future issues, but I don't think that's going to be a, a problem because, um, well, if you read it, awesome. If not, um, spoilers, I guess. But the only reason why they did what they needed to do was to protect their uh, country. Uh, it's a preemptive strike, obviously, but. Uh, their elements, if the well, elements of patriotism, and doing so kind of preemptively uh, defending. Wow, well, why am I thinking about America right now? God damn it! <laughs> uh, well, because we we we've made a lot of mistakes, and the elements of patriotism give way to the concepts of nationalism. Oh, hold on. Well. I'm sorry, but if that's the case, then Jeremy Lee apparently has no idea what nationalism is. So I'm just going to read that from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy because it's got the best explanation. <clears throat> the, term nation, the term nationalism is generally used to describe two phenomena. One is the attitude that the members of the nation have when they care about their national identity. And the second one is actions that the members of nation take when seeking to achieve or sustain self-determination. That's the basic outline of nationalism. 
All right, but at the same time too, if you're the leaders in power and suddenly uh, other nations attack you with how well, how, I, I think the best analogy I can put this is the game Mass Effect. The Salarians gave the Krogans uh, light speed or just evolved them faster than they should and gave them space travel and gave them weaponry. The Krogans yeah. who yeah. learn all this start using their f- newfound knowledge to, well, um, attack other planets and so on. So the Salarians had to come up with a plan mm-hmm. to kind of stop the Krogans that they kind of uplifted. And with that, they used the Genophage. So with that mindset there when, and carrying that principle to this one, yes, the Knights of Harmony messed up and they're trying to correct that. And yeah, but then it wasn't uh, preemptive action because everybody was already attacking them at that point. They were defending themselves. It was a necessary yeah. action. They, they defended yeah. themselves, and to they had every right to do yeah. that. And to prevent that from happening again, they stop the elements from appearing, which kind of makes sense if you're in their boat. Which I do not agree, but it does make sense in some freaky way. At that point, I wonder why were the elements in the other nations even necessary at that point if they managed to survive just fine without them? Yeah, I, I... other other than the other than to neutralize an imminent threat, which that was not related to the elements, like in uh, Zekora's land, it was that weird sand thing they used the elements the... to defeat it. The Grusling. Yeah, in uh, Abyssinia, it was that. Uh, well, King Meow, and they deposed the king. And then in uh, with Diamond Dogs, uh, well, it was basically the what was it? Hold on, what was from the, the Diamond, Diamond Dogs? Again? Was the building falling down? But basically, oh, their yeah, elements yeah, was the elements of family. Yeah, basically it's. Even even without the el- without the elements, they could have uh, just as easily uh, fix the problem. Otherwise, with the elements of uh, easy power ups, yeah, with, with the elements of farm family, not so much. They kind of needed it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this I don't know. It just feels that the trees of harmony were basically just oh, superfluous. I I, I mean, with the whole concept of this storyline in general. It feels like Jeremy Whitley, was it? Jeremy Whitley. Yeah. Double check. Uh, writer. Yeah, it is Jeremy Whitley. Jeremy Whitley. So it, with this whole story here, Jeremy, it feels like Jeremy Jeremy wanted to kind of do something else, but kind of ended up somewhere else entirely. It feels that way, and well, yeah, especially because. Uh, the issues after the chorus feels feel really rushed. Yeah, I, I, I guess. Uh, but anyway, um, Jacob, anything more to add? Um, hold on. Let me just. Uh, I think this is about it. Uh, Next, we have two parter issues together. Uh huh. Mm-hmm, true. True. Anyway, Silver, what about you? Final thoughts. Well. Let's talk about our Knight of Harmony, uh, Saradwin, who is apparently named for the Celtic goddess of rebirth, transformation, and inspiration. So we can definitely see the transforming aspects. Rebirth? The TF, yeah, even. Yeah, there, there's that too. When but, uh, she gave the crow, or, yeah, the crow, uh, awesome plumage to become a raven. Yeah. And then helped him enlarge. But I, for the life of me, I've been trying to find what kind of mythical creature she's based on. And unfortunately, cockatrice, part bird, part snake, is already taken. Um, she. So I'm not even sure what she is. She looks like something out of Aztec mythology. Honestly. Yeah, that's true, too, because uh, she does have that Aztec design. 
Oh, is it a she or a he? It's a she. Uh, it's a she, oh. yeah. She says she's the princess. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, or you said something like, but then we got derailed trying to get trying to figure out if she if she was a she. Uh, so it can't be a cockatrice because we've already we've already seen those in this world. Hmm. But you'll know, quickly discover that the Knights of Harmony are all based on mythological creatures and uh, named for gods and goddesses. So this was a taste of things to come. But. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Seeing the elements on the attack, looks like they're just going to beat them up. I'm like, okay. Can't say there's much of a family bond there. I mean, if anything, given the king's threat, I feel like these elements would be much weaker. But how, how, how do I put this? Like, I, I can see the logic with what the knights are trying to do. And it's, it's a twisted logic where if you think you're right, then that... Sorry, um, how do you put this? If... Hmm, a, a good analogy is, if you tell your size, If you tell yourself a lie so, to, so much that you start to believe in it, and this feels like it, but instead of telling it, it's been told to them for generations. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, but uh, this creature, um, I I do agree with Jacob that it looks very aesthetic in aesthetics. <laughs> Get it? Well, I mean, there's a uh, there's the Quetzal Quaddle. Mm, true, but that's a dragon, right? If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> it's, it's uh, no nope. wing serpent, wing serpent wing serpent. Oh, okay, because um, uh, the Quetzal, whatever her name is, um. Uh, was par what was in the enemy uh, dragon meat? <laughs> oh well, Aoi Zotal comes from uh, Aztecs. True, and I do see the resemblance. <clears throat> but which is which? I I can't tell you right yes. now. So it just requires a little bit more seeking. Mm, true, 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 true. Uh. Hold on, but, I think I just realized something uh, about the Knights of Harmony. So, as we established, the, all the knights are basically royalty. They have yep, names, more or less. They have names based on something that's, uh, that uh, it's either Celtic or is basically coming from British Isles. They live on an isolated island... And then we have the whole imperialism thing going on. This really is an allegory for the British <laughs> Empire. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, pr probably. Uh, it, it's one of those things where we, we, we want to know what creature there are. But still, it, 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 like Silver even... Uh, wait, Silver, did anybody mention anything about the creatures in your write-up for EQD? No, I don't think so. Mm, okay. Later, later nights were, we managed to uh, figure out what mythical creature they were inspired by, but I don't think I heard anything on this one. Mm. Well, I guess it can be helped, but still. So, um, anyway, Silver, anything more to add? Hmm. This one's the hardest to really root for because Solano herself was barely established as a character in the movie. And we never really got to root for her the same way we would for, say, Tempest. Or, and she didn't have the same vulnerability as even Princess Skystar. So, I hold this view. The more familiar you are with the character the more alien their home country can be because we have that anchor. Mm -hmm. Now, conversely, if we're not well connected to the character, then we need to see some sort of similarity in the kingdom to help the ponies be like, hey, this is a lot like what we went through. Say you have two competing rulers. Well, then a Celestian Luna. 
this whole forced marriage thing is a very foreign concept in My Little Pony. And so it's a very, I don't know if it meshes well uh, or if the audience can really identify. So unfortunately, it, everything's just a little too foreign to really root for. It's just like, okay, but why should I care, you know? I can dig it, I can dig it. And yeah, it's one of those things where once you're familiar with a character, you kind of root for them. But like you mentioned, um, if you go, once you go to their hometown or whatever and they're not the same, uh, you start questioning. So, I don't know, it, I was relieved that this was the end of the Find the Other Trees quests, which was unintentionally what this world tour had become. But in terms of, oh my gosh, where the knights are coming, the knights are coming, well, we've only seen a fraction of a knight. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know what else could be. Yeah, and what they are. What outcome could be. So I guess a sort of meh as we move forward. Uh, I, I, I know there's a fight of Bruin, but it's kind of meh. Uh, and I think yeah. her presence there was just to show how threatening they are. Like, uh, they, they want to show that um, one of them can already kick the ass of the elements of harmony. Uh, sorry, the elements of love. So what if you have six of them in a place together that would have been chaos which kind of threatens. but but you should remember love hurts but what is love baby, baby don't, don't hurt me. me don't hurt me <laughs> no more, no more. <laughs> yeah but still um with that um i, I guess anything, anything more to add silver Nope. All right. Um. Then it's me for the last, and yeah, I'm happy that IDW managed to um publish eleven um one hundred issues of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, not including the other side stories and so on. And if you include that, there's more than one hundred. But still, um, happy to be part of it. Uh, reviewing the comics and so on. But. As a story, I feel like 100 was kind of a misfire. Like, usually 100 is to celebrate a, mon a, a monumous, uh, um, a very awesome moment in time. And having the 100 issue be just a footnote in the comic for what was to become the what you would call this prequel to the end it's kind of not giving it a fair shot K kind of disrespectful if you ask me uh -huh. yeah that's true I mean even <sighs> I, I would have rather have the issue where okay 100 will be a size of life and 101 is where you jam pack everything into one book uh, but still yeah. but still i mean we, we got what we got and it was not bad i i like the characters i i, I like that quote-unquote um love connection between uh solano and uh Osipete. so yay that's fun to see but we are where we are right now because we ain't going to get any more and a lot of that is going to be mostly hit canon from now on or fan fiction pick one it's it's almost the same uh, but yeah um can't wait to finish the set um that's going to be next review i guess but yeah um with that comic ends yay 100. Woo! There was supposed to be a celebration, but instead we kind of neandered and stuff. Woohoo! So we're. Good. Okay. Close. But anywho, 
let's wrap things up. Let's wrap things up. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Lomar and So, Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me on Twitter, YouTube, and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can also do a search for After the Fact, but be sure to include Silver Quill, because otherwise you'll find a news program. I was doing it first, though. I just want to point that yep, out. Yep, and I, I, was I, was there, I was there to um, witness it, and fun fact, I... The first video I ever saw of you was the Power Ponies one. And that grabbed me. That was awesome, man. Well, thank you. And you can find uh, links to my Kofi and Twitter support uh, and uh, Patreon support if you'd like to help with After the Fact. Awesome, awesome. Go do so, guys. Uh, Jacob, what about you, man? Uh, you can find me on Demon Art under the username Yakapon Torkar. Under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Thermal Rising, you can find it on thinkfiction.net. And if you're just <clears throat> and if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the Tales of the Ashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Go do so guys. Uh, <clears throat> If and also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on putlive.com. Links will be in the show notes. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob. Lucky night, Master of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I've been Jacob. And we'll, guys, catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. You know, looking at the history of the pony comics right there's one creature that is not getting much credit in well it's history and that's King Aspin the deer well that's because he was a lousy king true that and also wait he's part of I don't want to even think about it he's a thousand years old almost similar to Celestia and Luna and he doesn't get his own tree apparently not I'm pretty sure the Cosmo Arc is not canon. <laughs>